have to do some more work on the whole thing here to get it right and of course we're going to have to rehair it which is always fun. I think we're on the downhill slide. I probably will try to make some little decorative button for that hole there too to restore this just a little bit more. Might as well since we've gone this far. You can see I've got a little tiny piece of deer antler chucked up in the uh, drill chuck there. The odd thing is, I guess there must be soft spots and hard spots in this antler because it's not turning round. It's kind of getting kind of an oblong thing to it. I'm really trying hard to get it to go round so I can fit it in the end of that ferrule or the screw, I guess you'd say, for the violin bow. But anyway, here we go. We'll try it again. It's definitely turning it a little off center. I don't know why, but it is. And I'm trying to see what size it is. Yeah, it's still a little large. I'm trying to get it down to one eighth of an inch, 125 thousandths. Be about three millimeters, roughly. I almost think it might be easier to do it by eye, like this, and get it more centered. Well, to my eye, that definitely looks better. I don't know if, it's, if it is better, but it looks better. Let's see what the measurement is. 142,000, so we're getting closer. Trying to go to 125. Now that that took off some of the high spot, let's see if it'll turn better. Maybe a little better. 128,000, so very, very close right there. Just lightly file it a little bit. That'll probably be enough. It's measuring a little larger that direction, so there must be must be off a little bit. If it's a little small, it won't really hurt. I can, the CA glue will hold it in there. That's 124 and a half thousandths. The way it measures right there, that's perfect. But it measures bigger this direction for some reason. 127, that's not too bad though. I think we can probably go with that. Now I've got to cut it off and make a ball on the end here. Got my little razor saw here, and I'm just approximating what I think. Kind of like if you were going to make a cube or a square block. In this case, I'm just trying to make a piece of a dowel that I can turn into a perfect ball or a perfect spear. So I'm just estimating it won't be perfect no matter how I do it anyway. And it's off. See if we can zoom in a little. I don't know if it'll zoom in much on that. That's about it. Maybe you can see what that looks like. And I'm going to go get a different file for rounding that off. I'll turn it on and see how this works. I've got my little half round file because it's got a nice edge that I can get in tight here. You get me It's all gone under my skin He held me He knew me over See if it even looks like a little bit of a ball there, sort of, but it's got a flat spot in it. I think I'm just going to do it by eye and hand here because I think I can get it close enough this way. Got a little bit of a flat spot on the one side. That may just have to be the way it is. Looking terrible. He got me just like the north wind. He left me. Just a comparison on the size. I think that's just about the right size, too, so that's just working out pretty good. Yeah, if it didn't have that one little flat area there, it would be a lot better, but like I said, I don't know how to get that out of there since it just kind of turned that way. It's not real bad now that I've filed away from that area. 
the other high spots I filed quite a bit here. Yeah, it's nowhere near perfect, but we didn't start with perfect material. It's better than having nothing there. It'll look better, and we didn't spend a lot of time on this. I'm going to go ahead and just saw it off. And hopefully it'll fit the hole. That's the main thing. That's what she looks like. Whoops. And of course I dropped it for the camera. Well, you can see I made the little ball. Got her fit in there. In case you were curious, that is made out of deer antler. It's not a perfect little ball, but it's good enough for our purposes. It's got a little different color than the rest of it, but that's okay too. That's what that ball's for, is just to give you a little extra. I think that's fine. So now let's see if we can permanently affix the little ball to this. We have our CA glue, and we have our little ball, and will I get that little ball glued before I glue my fingers together? And that's the, always the question with this stuff. I think that looks all right. What I think I'm gonna do now, believe it or not, is I'm gonna go chuck this up in the drill and then very lightly with a really small file, just try to clean it up that much more. I think it'll spin more uh, evenly with this, at least I hope it will. That's assuming that this is straight with this. And I don't know that yet. This does appear to be turning fairly straight, so I'm gonna just see if I can touch it up with this little file. Well, that, I think that did make it a little more round, a little more perfect. It's as good as it needs to be, let's just say it that way. There you go. Well, my friends, this little bow has been restored to its former glory, at least up to this point. We still don't have a grip, and we don't have hair, of course. Otherwise, I'd say mechanically, this thing is nearly as good as it was a hundred years ago. I think it's just as strong. It looks almost as good. It's come back to life anyway. If I was being critical, there's one more slight curve to the right. I wish it didn't have that. It's not real bad. Be nice if that wasn't in there and then it would be a really nice bow. It's just a, a decent bow, let's just say it that way. Because it's so old and ornate, that's the reason I wanted to restore the bow. Now let's see if we can find a way to put a decent grip on this. I've shown this device in one other video. Basically, it's an old hand drill. I just put a piece of rubber on here to stick the end of the bow in, and it will spin the bow. And then I just have just a wooden ferrule here to hold the other part of the bow to keep it from you know, flopping loose. And that seems to be working okay. I've got some old leather lacing here, and this old leather lacing is very old. <laughs> I'm sure I got this leather lacing when I was a teenager. And this is the last of it on that roll. In fact, the roll, the spool was right here. It says, Texas Lacing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Finest quality. Half inch calf, 50 yards. Well, I'm down to the last yard and a half here. We're going to try to put that on here as a grip. For the most part, I can kind of tell where the grip used to be, and so I'm just going to try to grip that same area. I don't really have a lot of experience gripping bows. I'll just tell you right up front. It's not my thing I do. I don't believe it's rocket science. So I'm just going to uh, do the best I can with what I have to work with. I'm going to try the super fatic glue, and the reason is it sets up fairly quickly, and it sticks almost anything to almost anything. I think it'll work really well for this. At least I hope it does. So here we go. All right, I've got this uh, as ready as I'll ever be to go here. I'm going to put a little bit of this glue on this area. My hope is that I can get this to stick. That's a pretty good hope. 
I may have to just let it sit there, do its thing for a little while until I get one end anchored. You have to pretty much anchor it to or order to uh, continue. At least I think I do. Maybe not. Getting somewhere there, I think. Let's see if we can continue on. With no way to begin. I think I want to cut that off. I don't want it to keep going. Uh-oh. You need three arms or three hands for sure on stuff like this. I think in this case, because I'm wrapping so slow, it's just easier to grab the stick itself and spin it. But at least it's held in place. I can already tell you this isn't going to be the very best grip ever put on a bow. But at least it'll have a grip. And it had nothing before and it'll be nice because it's leather which leather always feels good on as a grip okay I'm cutting this off wish I had a way to lock this drill from spinning at the moment and I think I do my lock is called uh, Caleb just hold on to that keep it from spinning thank you I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do this Something like this. Quiet. It's almost spring now. I'm silent. I'll get to summer somehow. Not real proud of that yet. I'm gonna try something else. Gonna have to have a few more wraps, I think. Because me, just like the north wind. I've never tried this type of a knot with flat stock. I've always done it with string, and it's easy with string. It's not so easy with this flat stuff and trying to make it come out smooth. As I say, it is what it is. I know that he did. How can I find words for him? Ah, oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. That was supposed to pull through there, and of course it didn't. Bummer. That's not good. That means I have to unwrap it because I can't get a hold of the end of it. That's the problem with using this really old lace. And the glue sets up so fast. It may not be the best knot in the world, but it's going to be a knot. I may have to redo that, but that's what I got right now. We'll wait and see how that dries out. and We may have to cut that off and start over. I don't know. Not real happy with that, but that's what I got. Well, this would be take two in terms of bow grip. I tried the leather, I and it was passable perhaps, but it just wasn't very good. And I think I can do a much better job with the silver and getting it tight. We're gonna give this a shot and see how this works. You gotta be really careful and, and you have to be very deliberate and get it very tight. Well, I didn't expect that. Didn't think I was pulling hard enough to break the wire, but obviously I was. So there you go. We'll do a take three. All right, third chime's a charm, right? Well, if you believe that, I've got uh, some 
ground down in the Okeechobee Swamp in Florida that I want to see if you would be interested in buying. We'll see. Maybe it'll go this time. And I'm pulling pretty hard again. I just hope I'm not pulling so hard that I'm going to break it. And now that I've gone around it a couple of times, I'm going to try to undo this loose end. Cut off the excess here. And now maybe we'll get it going. And once I get past the little end I've got here, then I can go a little faster, I think. I'm not crazy about how this is going. It's going okay, but it's not going great. Okay, so now I hope it's gonna do its thing here and go ahead and wrap it around there. As tightly as I can get it to stay. Yeah, I've got a little design flaw in my reel here. I need some way of locking it in place. What you try to do is have your thread lean slightly that direction because we're rolling this direction and then that way it keeps it tight. You can't do it very much or it'll roll back over the other stuff. So you got to have it just in the right spot. Let's we'll see if Caleb can turn it for me and that way I can control this end a little bit better. Yeah, teamwork. There we go. This wire's kind of kinked up on my spool here, so I'm a little bit worried that it's going to be a problem when I get to that. So I'm trying to get to that now and get it over with. to do bowstring serving was I had a little mechanism that fit right up to this and I could just spin it around the bowstring and in hindsight I'm thinking that might be better than the way we're doing it because it it worked great and it was very quick actually we may end up using all of our serving on this one bow may have made that a little long this grip but that's about how long it looked like it was originally, so I just kind of went back over the same space. You left me with nowhere to begin. How you moved me, I know that he did. How can I find words for him? I think we're done. Why don't you stop there and I'll do the rest by hand. I'm pretty sure this is how I do this. I, I'm more comfortable with this round than I am with the flat. In fact, I'm 99% sure this is correct. And you wrap it a bunch of times, and then it'll wrap back over itself here in a minute. I'll show you how you do this. He moved me. I know. No, I didn't do it right either. It didn't unwrap. I was thinking I had it to where it would unwrap. Well, I just did that wrong. Okay, well, we're almost on a take four here. I was thinking that through in my head, and I thought I had it right, but apparently I didn't. Oh, well, let's do it again. It's backwards than the way I typically seem to do it. It's working, I guess. It's probably because I think I've got this first part wrapped backwards from the way I normally do it. Now when I wrap around here, this end is unwrapping, which is the way it's supposed to be. How can I find words for him? All right, then once you get that done, then you should be able to grab this end and pull it through. And it should lock down on itself won't hurt to touch a little CA glue right here on the end. 
again, not the best job I ever did, but it, I think it's passable. I think it'll work. Not a great job, just a reasonably okay job. We'll call it good enough. I think that's going to work. So there's a look at it finished. I might possibly try a little leather end on each end. Maybe. It's more of a decoration. You don't even really need it at all, to be perfectly honest with you. Just kind of a traditional thing. But I might try a little bit of leather on each end or something just to cap it off. We'll see. Off camera, I've done a few, little bit of work. I got me a hank of horse hair. I put a little wedge piece of spruce in here in this hole and I wedged this hair down in there. And typically you can do that and not use any glue. But this aluminum is so slick, I didn't trust it. So I did put a, just a little bit of superfatic around the edges here just to hold it in place. I think that's going to be fine and, and it's not hard to get that back out. That won't create any real problem. The next thing we do is we comb the hair and get it perfectly straight. And in other words, you don't want any kinks in the hair at all. And I've already combed this and you probably can't see the whole thing on camera, but you can see how I start combing it here and slide down through it. And once you get the hair perfectly straight, then you bring it back over this way and this is the way you want the hair to end up, perfectly flat and straight when you're done. The trick is you have to tie it into this frog and it has to be held into this frog and the frog has to be able to tighten up. So the frog has to come apart and we have to make things in there to make this all happen. And we have to tie this off at a certain spot. So the bottom line is it's not a simple process. Making a bow work is one of the more complicated things there is to do in luthery. Typically in a violin shop, they have a master bow maker who is different than the violin makers. They're not the same people generally. I've got to take this all apart now, but it should come apart easy because it's built correctly now. One of the key things about this is remembering to put this ferrule on before you do all this. Once you get the hair in here, this ferrule had already been down on the hair or you're in trouble. So I have to remember that, but I can't put it on yet. There are a couple other processes that have to be done before I can put that on. But that is something I've forgotten in the past and it's a pain in the neck once you forget that because you have to undo everything you've done. So here's the place the hair has to go. It has to go down in there. It's just not simple. So how do you figure all this out? Well, the way I do it, I slide the frog toward the tip as, as much as I can. Then you take your hair, you get your hair lined up like so. You have to make a mark on the hair where you need to tie it off. Basically, it's about a quarter inch past the hole. That's just a ballpark guesstimate. And so I'm just going to make a mark here in the hair. We're just going to hope that it works. That's really the bottom line here. Now that I've got it turned back over this way, I'll comb it again. Now the tricky part is here, we have to tie this off where we have this mark and it's not easy to do. You got to hold this in the air, tie this all off. It just ain't easy. Trust me. I'll get set up to do that and I'll show you how I accomplish that. One of the things that makes this a little easier to handle is to wet the hair down. I'm going to uh, try to do that here with the comb and just comb it through there and get it damp. It starts to hold together better, better and uh, it just seems to make the whole process a little bit easier. And then the other thing I want to do is press, press it down up here to make sure that it's going to be good and flat when we get it all tied up. 
My mark is still there. I can still see my mark, but I'm going to check it again to make sure it's still in the right place. Looks good. I've already tied a slip knot in the end of this little tiny piece of thread that you probably can't even see. Try to get the thread over all the hair here, and of course the hair is cooperating fully on camera here. It's all spread out and giving me no trouble whatsoever. I think I got it around there. And then once you get it around there, then you take and you pull the knot up fairly tight right on your mark. Then, this is kind of like doing the uh, serving here, this stuff. You just start wrapping it. And it, it's not easy to do. If this looks easy, you're not looking at it right because it ain't easy. And you want to wrap it at least 10, 12 times. Something like that. I've got way more string here than I need probably, but it's easier to have more than you need than it is to run short, even though it's a little hard to pull it all through there. More is better in terms of these wraps. You can overdo it, I guess. By the way, the, end of, the loose end of the slip knot has been pulled through here so that I'll be wrapping over the top of that, I hope, whenever I start wrapping here. I take the loose end of the other piece and I hold it under my thumb. I know you can't see that either, but the long loose end is under my thumb now. And as I start wrapping this around there, I'm wrapping it over both of the loose ends. It's not unwrapping at the end like it should, and I don't know if I went the wrong way again. It somehow got knotted up. I don't even know how it did that. Well, because it's knotted up here, I can't continue on, so I'll have to undo what I've done and start over. Sorry about that. I'll try to get the camera closer, too. Okay, I've started this again, and I'm basically wrapping this around. I don't know how it got in a knot. It shouldn't have. It just did that because we were on camera. I am positive. So then once I get that loose, I take that loose end and I hold it under my thumb here and now I start wrapping everything this way and that should unwrap here at the back end and this time it is doing that I think it just has to play hard on camera yeah it's working this time and I did it exactly the same I don't know what the difference was it's just that it could get tangled that first time so it did now you take this loose end and you pull it tight and that pulls the string back up under itself. The knot is right there at my mark. I'm keeping this all flat as much as I can. Pulling the hairs like this to get them through there. And then I just pull this up as tight as I can get it by pulling on both loose ends actually. The problem is this thread isn't terribly crazy strong so you can break the thread really easy so you got to be careful like I said there's really nothing about this whole process that's easy I've got the knot there really tight once you get it then you cut off your loose ends I've got those cut off and now I'm going to cut off the loose hair and I'll cut that and let it fall here in this towel hopefully you can see what I'm doing it's hard to do this in camera I'm going to cut it off a little bit long first because it's easier, i found, to trim it after you cut it off the first time. And you want to trim it right back to very close to your knot. And that's the problem with this is you get one shot at this. And I mean seriously you get one shot at it. You mess this up and you've just ruined all your hair. That's about as good as that's going to get. Then I take the Elmer's white glue and I put it on the end here and I put it on my knot and I put it on the end of the hair. This kind of glue kind of swells up the hair. It's got a lot of water in it so it kind of swells up the hair, makes everything kind of stick together. 
and then you got to get your little flame out and heat this up and I'll show you how to do that okay so I, I the glue's kind of dried a little bit so I'm gonna put just a little bit more on the very tip end and I don't want a lot to, but just enough to keep it moist now I'm going to take this little lighter and I'm going to just touch it to the very end of the hairs this makes those hairs swell up and it makes the glue bond really good too it seems to and I do it while the glue is wet and that's what it should look like I'm going to put a little bit more glue right on the thread itself so that the thread kind of bonded permanently there maybe just a tad more right on the tip end and just do it one more time And we'll give that a couple of minutes to try to dry a little bit better and we'll show you what the next step is off camera I made myself a little tiny wedge that's going to go down in this hole right here and hold the hair down in there the trick of this whole thing is to keep the hair straight get it bent back like so it has to actually bend back like this and then that wedge has to slide in here to do that I just keep it in the same orientation I move it over here where I can get to it because you just can't get to it the way it's oriented there you can't see what I'm doing I understand that sorry I wish I could show it to you but I have to force this down in there and force this little wedge down in there and there's just no room there's not even room for me let alone to get the camera in here and show you oh wow I can't believe it it actually went so it's down in there maybe you can see the wedge perhaps and see I already did what I said I wasn't gonna do I forgot to put the ferrule on there you go that's why it went so easy the first time because I forgot to put the ferrule on and it, trust me it'll never go that easy again in a million years what's worse than that is I think I'll have to make a new wedge because I don't think this wedge will be reusable I forced it down in there and I doubt it's gonna be usable again I knew I would forget that I always do even though I try really hard not to forget it but at least I didn't get it all put back together this time there's the wedge maybe I can reuse it okay the ferrule has to go on here and I have to make sure I put the ferrule on the right direction also because it's kind of got rounded corners okay the ferrules on there now so I can't forget that again I've still got the orientation the same can lightning strike twice probably not so far no but it's getting there maybe well it's definitely not going as easy the second time yeah it's not going near as easy the second time same wedge <laughs> there it is it went in and it's really locked in there it's it's done well assuming it stays that way now we can put this on here and we can start putting this together the slide goes in here to cover all this up I'm hoping this is going to be tight enough honestly I can tell you I'm afraid it isn't going to be tight enough I'm afraid I've got too much slack even though that worked I think I'm going to have to take this back out and make it a little tighter and the only way I can make it tighter is to try to fold the hair in there a little bit more and I don't know if that's possible odds of that wedge working a third time I would say are slim to zero but we'll give it one more shot well it went in there I think it's just a little bit tighter than it was before hopefully the hair will stay that way now we can slide this little slider in the slot over the top of the hair when I pull back like this the hair tightens up and that went right in there right over the top of the hair now I can put it on here put the little screw in to hold it in place slide the ferrule down into place now we should be able to take this little wedge this is the original wedge tighten up this and when I say original I mean original to the last time it was rehaired probably made new at that time 
but I'm going to use it again if I can. If I can, and I'm not sure I can, but we'll give it a shot. I'm cleaning it off because there was some old glue and hair on it. But if it will let me reuse it, I will reuse it. The little wedge goes in, I don't know if you can see it, how it's going in under the hair there. Basically, you spread the hair out and slide the wedge in as you spread the hair out. It didn't go just quite like I want it, so I'm gonna to try to get it back out of there. It's very close, but I, can, I think we can do better. I want the hair spread out as much as possible without going around the end of the wedge. And if the arthritis didn't hurt so bad where I could move my hands better and my thumbs better, this would be very easy, actually. I'm sure it looks very awkward on film, and it's because it is awkward because of the pain. So that did work better that time. It's going down in there, and I'm spreading the hair out as much as I can, getting it flat, forcing the wedge down in there at the same time. Now I'm going to take the tool. It's rounded. It doesn't have any sharpness to it. And I'm going to push down on the wedge to tighten it up as much as possible. The more I can get it in there, the harder I can press it into place, the better the hair will stay, and everything should work. So now it's pressed in there really well. Now let's see if we can tighten up the hair enough to make the bow playable. And that's the tricky part. If you didn't get the right length, then the bow won't be playable. And I think I did. I think I got it. I think it's going to be fine. I'm going to have to do a little bit of rosining and, you know, clipping off some of the very loose hairs and things. But it looks straight. I don't see any crossover hairs. So it looks pretty darn good. I won't say it's perfect, and I'm sure a real bow person could do a better job. That's as good a job as I can do, and when you consider how bad this bow was when it came into the shop, that's quite an improvement, I would say.